Maybe All right, ready. hello everybody. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to, everyone to bow their heads and we're going to pray real quick. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to speak, to bring your word. Uh, we must remember we're your servants, Father. We are part of your flock. We are part of your church. And ultimately our goal is to carry that in our lives as well as uh, in our actions. Father God, as I proceed today, I just pray that the words that I speak, Father, are your words, that they bring glory to you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So the other night, you know, I get home from work and I'm relaxing. I'm sitting on the couch. It's been a long day. It's been hot. Everybody knows it's been very, very hot. So I get home. I take the dog out. I sit on my couch. Whether or not I took a shower first is irrelevant. But I'm sitting there watching TV, and I'm flipping through the channels, flipping through the channels, and as we know, we could have 10 channels, or we could have 500 channels. There's never anything on TV. Am I right? You're right. So, as I'm flipping through the channels, I'm becoming disinterested in what's on TV, and inevitably, I find myself on my phone. I'm sitting there scrolling through my Facebook feed. Oh yeah, I like that. That's pretty funny. Hmm, I wish you wouldn't have done that. And then I come upon the Facebook Marketplace. And we're all familiar with the Facebook Marketplace. I'm not actually clicked onto the Marketplace. It's just where they show a little advertisement. They show a little, like a clickbait, something to catch your attention. And I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do that. So I get up from the couch, and I do 100 push-ups. Nah, no, I didn't do 100 push-ups. I'm just kidding. I don't even know if I could do that, at least not in a row anyway. Um, but as I'm sitting there looking, I did what most of us do. I gave in and I clicked on Facebook Marketplace. And I'm scrolling through and I'm scrolling through and I'm looking at all these things that people have for sale. And you know you can find anything on the Marketplace. You can find clothes, you can find kitchen appliances, dogs cars, trucks, whatever you're looking for, you can find it. Now, obviously, it's not something that you really should be jump all in on. You know, you need to be cautious, need to be careful. But as I'm sitting there looking at it, there were a few things on there that were valuable only to a few I noticed. You know, some things that some people might look at and say, eh, what would I do with that? What purpose would that serve in my life? That's not any good. That's of no use. It's invaluable. It is broken or whatever. See, our brokenness does not determine our worth in the eyes of God. And who we are is not who we, or who we were is not who we are in Christ. God does not value the, the drug addict more than he does the pastor. We're all equal in his eyes. So today I'm going to be talking, or speaking from Luke 7, 36 through 50. And I'm going to start with verses 36 through 38. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him, at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. Now, back in first century Judea, it was pretty common for a religious leader to invite a rabbi into his home for a meal. That was a common practice. This time is a little bit different, because Jesus is not treated in the same way many of these other rabbis would have been treated. It would have been customary, as he entered the home, for that, that Pharisee to offer either a servant to wash his feet or a water basin so that he could wash his feet. But that was not provided. At least it's not mentioned anywhere in here yet. And yet there is no ind indication the Pharisee even thought about doing it. It's not even like a hindsight mention. 
Now, the woman who was the sinner, the woman who entered this home, well, she was most likely a prostitute. She uses her own tears to wash the feet of Jesus. Her own tears. She had an alabaster jar of perfume, and, and you may think that this is what that was meant for. Francis Chan once said, we never grow closer to God when we just live. It takes deliberate pursuit and attentiveness to Christ. This woman is obviously pursuing Christ. This woman was a sinner, a prostitute, and can you imagine how comfortable she must have felt in the house of a Pharisee? See, the Pharisees looked to the outside. They judged everything on its face value. They were self-righteous and above everybody else. You might say above the law. This Pharisee would have condemned her, condemned her lifestyle, and saw her as a lost cause. She was risking everything even entering the house. I mean, who knows what could have happened to her in the home of a religious leader as that type of person. What was even more remarkable is that Jesus allowed the woman to wash his feet. He didn't show her away. He allowed it to happen. He saw past who she was and saw her for what she could be, saw her humility, her courageousness to enter that home. We look at Romans 6, 4 for, as an example. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. See, the woman knew Jesus was going to be there, knew who he was. I mean, everybody was kind of talking about him, I'm sure. And she decided to take that risk regardless. Regardless of who she was, her past, the life she was living, she, she saw something more. It was like the light at the end of the tunnel. And Jesus saw that, saw the repentant heart and her humility. Now, as we read through this, as we get further down in this, 39 through 43, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is. That is, she is a sinner, a prostitute. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave both debts. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. See, when we look at people, we look at the outside, just a lot like these Pharisees sometimes. We see that drug addict, we see that homeless person. We see sometimes an unredeemable person. We may have a coworker that is a profound atheist, and we see that outward expression, but we don't look in deeper to what is inside that person. Jesus was able to see through. Jesus was able to see that this woman truly knew where she was and where she needed to be and who he was and that he was the way for her to get there. You see, the Pharisees were more concerned with outer purity rather than purity of the heart. Now, a good example of this is in Matthew 23, 27. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. Are we like the Pharisees or are we like Jesus? Are we living like the Pharisee or are we living like Jesus? It's kind of like that, that Facebook marketplace, right? So the other day I actually saw a post on there, which I'm a car guy. Those of you that know me know that I like cars. And so I noticed a listing, and on this listing it said this. It said, 1969 Ford Mustang, body in great condition, does not run, engine is seized up, and transmission needs to be rebuilt. I mean, you know, and it was like $6,500. And most people would look at that and say, eh, it doesn't run, it needs an engine, it's old. It's broken on the inside. I don't care what it looks like on the outside, it's broken on the inside. Aren't we all broken a little on the inside? Are any of us above reproach? 
just like that 1969 Mustang, we need a little repair. And Christ offered us that repair. What's funny is a lot of us know we need that and know we're broken. But we, we lie to ourselves and tell us we're not broken, kind of like this Pharisee. This Pharisee tells himself and the, and the Sanhedrin and all these religious leaders, they're way up here and everybody else is way down here. They're above reproach. Everybody else is deserving of, in some cases, being stoned to death, like an adulteress or, or, or something of that case. We all know the story where Jesus... That woman is brought out, and you know they say, "Hey, this woman, you know, had sex outside of marriage, and according to the law of Moses, we are to stone her to death." How did Jesus respond to that? He knew every single one of them was sinful, and he called them out on it, just like he calls out these Pharisees. See, he knew who she was, what she had done. And she knew he knew her past. But he also saw her heart and saw her humility and saw repentance. Jesus saw what the Pharisee did not see. The Pharisee saw a prostitute, a sinner, a woman of the night. A woman who was unredeemable, a sinner, unworthy, deserving of the worst kind of punishments. Jesus saw the humility and the willingness to enter the house of a Pharisee, enter pretty much into the lion's den. A religious leader who only cared about what was on the outside. This was supposed to be a man of God. God created everything. If he created everything, then he created this woman as well, and she has lost her way. Now, as we continue to, to go through the scripture, verses 44 through 50, it kind of really escalates. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her own tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not pull, put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. As I've said, the, the Pharisee was focused on who the woman was. That's a past tense word, was. Jesus chose to show love and forgiveness, focused on what she could be. As I, as I had read before in Romans 6, 4, we're a new creation in Christ, and when we come to Christ, we are renewed. He saw her desire to draw close to him, to serve him. The Pharisee acted in a way that was counter to the nature of God. Now, what do we see in others? I've asked that question earlier, and I'm going to ask it again. What do we see in others? Do we see what's on the outside, the cover of an ugly book? Or do we see what's on the outside and understand that there's more to the story than what we see? As I said, we're all broken. We all have our our trials we've been through, we all have the sins we have committed, none of us is without sin. Now here's the big question. How do we treat those that we know are outside of Christ? How do we treat those that come to us as this woman came to that Pharisee? Every day we're given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to share in the love of Christ. Not in just how we live and how we act, but how we care for those that no one cares for. If you know the history of, of the first century, prostitutes were kind of on the same level as a leper. They were outcasts of society. They were the lowest of the low of the women of the night. And this, this woman took her most prized possession, her perfume, and brought it into the lions then the house of the Pharisee. And then went to the feet of Jesus, knowing full well that he was mistreated. How do we act in the world in that way? Do we respond as the Pharisee? Do we respond as a child of God, as a follower of Christ? Right before this situation, there are a couple things that happen in the book of Luke that kind of 
you know, amplify this story. First we see, do not judge others. In Luke 6, 39, it says, He also told them this parable. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they not both fall into a pit? The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself fall to fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye, and then you will see clearly and remove the speck from your brother's eye. I think that's how the Pharisee was kind of acting here. The Pharisee saw the speck in the eye of the woman, but did not see his own hypocrisy. So here's what I'm asking you to do. As we go forward, ask yourself every day, who am I? Am I the Pharisee or I am, am I the prostitute? I know that's a silly question. Nobody wants to be a prostitute here, I'm sure, but look at how she responded to Jesus versus how the Pharisee responded. The Pharisee disrespected him, didn't wash his feet, didn't offer his feet to get washed, didn't kiss him, which was a customary greeting in those days, didn't do anything that they would normally do with a visiting teacher, treated him as a lesser citizen. Or the woman who, who probably didn't have much, brought her prized possession and loved Jesus knowing full well that that was the way to redemption, knowing full well that was the way to her salvation, her out from who she was to who she could be in Christ. So those, that's what we need to do almost on a daily basis. It's so hard in this world to get lost, to get lost in secular thinking that this person is beneath me. Look what kind of car they drive. This person is beneath me. Man, I have to do twice as much work as this person every single day. It's really easy. It's really easy. Just as I'm sure it was easy for the Pharisee to ignore what was happening right in front of them. So, ask yourselves every day, who do I want to be? Do I want to be that religious leader? Or do I really want to love Jesus? and follow his example. We all know that Jesus, Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. How deep does that love grow? Is that a deep love for just immediate people? Or is that love for everybody? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Father God, I... I am humbled before you, I am your servant, and I will follow where you lead. It is so easy for us, Lord, to fall into that thinking of the world, that judgmental onlooking of others, instead of seeing what, what they are searching for, what they are longing for, and that is you. Father God, as we go out, just be with us, speak to us as we are given the many opportunities to share your love and who you are with others, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.